the way you are speaking it it matters so much it doesn't matter what you are speaking at times okay it matters as to how you are putting it there or how how are you conveying it in a very smart manner whenever somebody is reading your speech you are supposed to persuade this one person regarding the idea that you are talking about cleanliness is the condition or attribute of being or remaining clean everyone must learn about cleaning everything about what is cleaning why is it important okay hello and a very warm welcome to your prep school english classes i am your english teacher kshama in this session today we are going to take up part 1 of your writing skills which is required for the cbsc 11th standard uh, it includes speech writing and debate writing which is there as a part of your writing skills okay without wasting any time let's see what is there in this session so we are going to find out what is debate we have heard debates okay what is debate writing about how are we supposed to write debate okay what is a speech of course we have heard a lot of people rant in speech do give speeches about a lot of things now what is speech writing okay and how are we supposed to do it in order to understand that we need to know the essential components that are uh, there in case of a debate and a speech okay and what is it that that differentiates both debate and speech from each other there are chances if there is a question asked i might end up writing a speech because thinking that it is about a speech what is uh, expected out of me was a debate so in order to clarify all those doubts okay here am i to uh, explain it to you how to write a debate and a speech how are they different from each other and let's look at a couple of practical examples as always in order to understand them better okay so the first things first debate what is debate we have heard people debate about topics now it is when if you take it in the context of a competition it is when two parties have two different ideas or opinions about um, a certain topic and they are there to present it against each other now why is it that it is called as a debate and not speech let's understand it later now the first thing is that it literally means discussion or argument about a certain topic so the it is a formal type of writing debate is not any informal kind of writing any general kind of writing it is supposed to be very formal and there is a strict format that you need to follow now options uh, either you can talk for the topic or against the topic so it is your choice if only it is given you talk for the topic you obviously take up uh, for the topic and start talking about it now written logically in order to persuade the reader now when you are debating about a topic your motto or your agenda is to convince the audience or whoever you are debating against or arguing against to convince that your point or your stand about the topic is the correct one and in order to do so you can't just go haphazard and talk all that um, illogical thing that does not make sense isn't it it should have a logical flow whatever that you are speaking should make sense it should be rational in nature and should be put a uh, very well put very well put meaning it should be articulated in a very well uh, manner the way you are speaking it it matters so much it doesn't matter what you are speaking at times okay it matters as to how you are putting it there or how how are you conveying it in a very smart manner now that when you are writing it we have heard a lot of debates it is your time to put it on paper write a debate okay so it should be clear precise and bold in nature when you are expressing your opinion you are writing it down should include facts and personal observations and logical statements your debate writing becomes stronger when you can inculcate a couple of facts and your personal observations into it 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 shows how much grip you have over the topic it gives you a lot of subject authority hold over the subject when you use a personal observation and inculcate statistics be it statistical data or facts okay debates takes place in meetings assemblies parliaments and competitions held in schools these are the places now you might be wondering why are we learning debate writing in the first place it is because in a lot of instances out there in the world you are going to encounter situations where you have to take a stand and argue about certain things okay because you have a different opinion or perspective about certain things you should be able to put it across but in the most effective way possible without offending the person uh, in front of you but yet at the same time conveying your point of view justifying your point of view why do you believe in something the way you are believing you should back it up okay that is the motto of it now should always include creative and formal language can be written since uh, you are addressing when you are writing a debate also in your paper you should keep in mind 
that you are addressing there are a larger audience that are looking at your debate and hence your language should be formal not as much uh, cor corrosive language as you see foul language or corrosive language you see nowadays that is being used in the debate uh, setup okay it should be very respectful creative as creative as possible how can we make our debates creative let's understand okay can be written in and around when you're writing it for your exams it should be a minimum of 120 to 150 words it should consist that quotations can be added now now let's jump into a couple of things that make our debate stand out from the rest of them okay first things first you can add powerful quotations or quotations by uh, people who are very well known in that particular field for example if you are uh, having a debate related to the freedom fighters and everything who are the freedom fighters list down a couple of famous freedom fighters and take their quotations appropriately to the given topic and according to the situation where you are in and the stance that you have taken use quotations questioning the audience is another important point to be kept in mind while writing a debate you can question the beliefs while you are writing if you are standing against a certain topic okay so for example if uh, you are writing a debate or you are saying that plastic usage should be banned or the other person is talking something else they are the other person is saying you know plastic is used in a lot many things and it is very uh, affordable so hence we are going to use it continue to use it so how are you going to uh, make your stand and say that no there are a couple of alternatives that can be used you have to use a couple of quotations in order to save nature or those that have been given by environmentalists that can be used in this context okay now you when you're writing you can question what the uh, people are doing in general what is the mass is following in general okay so you might question that will you be okay with your pet dogs um, you know feeding on plastic on the road if if it was if you see a lot of cows grazing on these plastics and everything what if it was your own pet the lovely pet that you adore so much okay you question the belief system that is that you think is wrong in a most polite way again put it that way uh, but you are questioning it in order to bring or emphasize on what you are trying to say okay then let's look at the format of debate when you are about to write a debate this is the format you should follow the first one is your debate uh, you have to give it a heading what is the debate what is the topic about while you are writing it okay now that the topic is done uh, you have to come to the first paragraph the first paragraph of your debate is the one of the essential components okay if i were to read this particular debate what is it that that i want or what do i get from this debate that this is going to help me find out the first paragraph is going to help me find out it's basically like a free marketing strategy to your debate that is the one thing that draws the attention of the reader towards your particular debate okay debate writing so it contains the salutations and self introduction whenever imagine yourself to be um, you know on stage giving a debate or participating in a debate saying that so this is it Good morning, everyone. Happy morning. Cheerful morning. I am Kshama or I am so and so. Your name follows, isn't it? You have to do the same thing while writing as well. First paragraph includes salutations and self introduction. Uh, what are you, uh, who are you? Where have you come from? If you're representing a school, if you, whatever that has been asked in the situation, you have to write that. Then, what is the next thing? You have to state whether you are talking against the topic or you're talking for the topic. You stand by the topic or you do not stand by the topic. Your stand in the topic must be clear. So for or against the topic, it's done. For example, let's take an example about the first paragraph. Good morning, everyone. Esteemed judges, you are giving salutations. You are acknowledging each and every one present over there. Esteemed judges, guests on the dais teachers and my fellow students okay my name is abritej saho and today i will be speaking for the topic so the salutations are over self introduction are over the person has told you whether he is talking for the topic or against the topic then tell us what the topic is make them know that you have understood what the topic is in the first place okay so double inverted comma compulsion to wear uniforms in education institutions that is the topic and you are speaking for the topic okay so a few introductory lines in the paragraph now in this particular first paragraph you can talk about what is the idea behind uniforms in educational institutions in the first place why is it that uniform came into the picture in the first place is it because you know they wanted each and every student who comes from varied backgrounds to have a similar mindset 
when they are studying under one roof education should be their main motto and goal and no other distractions and everybody should also be treated equally uniforms in school sort of you can um, use a couple of quotations or you can also create your own quotation and write over there you can take the creative liberty and write your own quotation uh, which can be like uniformity in schools also brings about uniformity in the macroscopic in the larger world that you are about to step into right if uniformity is cultivated here in the minds of students then when you go out there you will treat everybody equally okay add a few introductory lines as such this one background information or you know uh, what was it supposed to be what are the things why was it invented or why was it why did it come to the picture in the first place argumentation in the next paragraph you can choose to argue in the upcoming paragraph give us a couple of introductory details in the first paragraph okay next coming to the part of the second paragraph what should the second paragraph include it should include this is the major body of the debate this is what is going to help you win whatever argumentation and debate that you are about to take up okay you don't have to write when you are writing first paragraph second paragraph third paragraph no you should know what is the bifurcation what is it that my first paragraph should include second and the final one so in the second one this is the major one introduce the topic tell us about the topic more and start giving us uh, details as to why you have chosen a particular stand against it why are you for wearing uniforms okay provide argumentation or justification for why you chose a stance clear in our example that we have taken up now how is it that we can do it over here you can start off by giving a brief uh, introduction to the idea behind wearing uniforms and uniformity it brings in the educational setup if you have multiple arguments if there are multiple reasons that you could give and back up your debate what can you do you can have multiple paragraphs in the body of the second paragraph okay and have sufficient to write about each one break the body into multiple paragraphs give reasons in each and every paragraph and avoid making more than two or three paragraphs though stick to the word limit it should be valid and relevant you know look at the word limit that you have which is 120 to 150 words and within that okay if you can have a chunks of two or three paragraphs because you have stronger uh, reasons to justify your stand then you can break down this particular paragraph into multiple paragraphs and write down then the final one is the final paragraph self explanatory what are you supposed to do you are supposed to win and make people clear about the fact that this is your stand these are reasons justifications in the second part it should be valid it should be relevant it shouldn't be something that is cooked up okay so this is the conclusion what are you going to do in the conclusion write up your uh, debate writing you are supposed to brief the gist of your arguments so what are you supposed to do you are supposed to summarize it if it is a problem that we are talking about you are supposed to give us solutions and suggestions okay uh for example with regard to the usage of plastics you can give suggestions of alternative things cloth bags you know everything that you can use or is it in case of the uniform wearing example that you took um there we can talk about uh what are the things that made you take this stand and you are supposed to summarize it okay the problem suggestions advice for change all of this will be in the final part so it is pretty similar to the essay and everything that you used to write however it only includes um salutation self introduction um acknowledging the people who are present and then telling us uh, do you stand by the topic or against the topic what are the reasons and summarize it and end it in the conclusion reiterate whatever your st uh, uh, stance is reiteration of your strongest points by the time you have come to the end of the debate you would have realized what are the things that made me a star what are the points that made me a star or stand out in this particular uh, instance and reiterate let them go back to that point and recollect you were good when you said this particular uh, thing when you explained this particular topic in this way you were good okay when you said um, uniforms bring about uh, uniformity not just in the school but also outside uh society you were good so reiterate that in the final paragraph as well then try to write this between 5 to 6 lines and end with the thank you for your patient hearing acknowledge the people who are there who are listening to your debate and everything they are giving you your time so you have this is very important at the end thank you for your patient listening or thank you for giving me an opportunity okay acknowledge the opportunity given to you finish it up within a couple of lines because your first paragraph and the final paragraph is as important as the body of the uh, debate as well 
So that's it about your debate writing. Uh, three components, first, second and final paragraph and what are the components that are included and should be included in it. Then comes an example in front of you. An example that talks about, let's see what the topic is and if the person has followed the actual format that we were talking about. So, very good morning to the respected members of the jury and my worthy opponents, okay. The person has not just, um, you know, uh, given us the wishings and acknowledged or, you know, wished the jury but also the opponents. So the salutation is over. Then self-introduction. Today, I'm going to speak for the motion. So you're supposed to introduce yourself as well. I am so-and-so. And today, I'm going to speak for um, this topic. What is the topic? Should criminals in prison be given the opportunity of learning uh, and education? Should they be given an opportunity? I speak for the motion for the topic. Yes. Then... There is a little background this person has given as to why is education important? Uh, how is education a powerful tool in transforming a person altogether holistically to bring about change? That background the person has spoken about. It, it sets uh, the stage for the debate and makes the opponent as well as the jury understand that you know you have a good shoulder over your heads. You understand what you're speaking. You have grip over your subject because you know these things, the background things. Why is education important? When you are, all that they want to know is you know uh, about the decision that you're making. You are well aware of, you're well informed or otherwise about the decision that you're taking when you stand by the topic. This is important, one of the major skills, isn't it? Decision making skills. Now, when you go out there and talk about something, if only you know what you're talking, your, inf uh, your decision is well informed, it is always a good decision. Okay, that is a coverted skill um, that is being tested in case of your debate writing. Okay, then comes uh, the body of the paragraph was there where you have described about it is a basic right as well. You are aware of the fact that it is a basic right to all human beings. And I strongly feel that I told you including a couple of personal observations can strengthen your debate. Okay, uh, leaves a mark on the psyche of an individual making him even more capable of grasping concepts. You are, you are giving reasons justifying uh, the stance as to why you have stood by this topic. Then are prisoners not humans? Again, now I told you it is very important to question the audience in order to reinforce your idea uh, about what you are thinking. Are prisoners not humans? When I ask this, does it not make you think or rethink what you are thinking about it or at least to agree with him or her more, okay? Can they be given a second chance? These are the kind of questions that we were talking about. The prisoners who are low on self-confidence and feel that life has come to an end have chances to improve and get a positive mindset. This is the reason why you stood by this topic. Then I'd like to leave you with these words. There should be a powerful ending to the debate writing and that is when it becomes, um, you know, effective. So education is the key. Now the quote has been added as well. All the points that I told you has been added in this particular debate writing. Um, education is the key to metamorphosis. Okay, change. I hope I have been able to convince you all with my views. Thank you or regards. Thank you for the opportunity. Now that is how you write a wonderful debate. Okay. I'm sure you can all do this. Now, next part, the second thing that we have to discuss. So, there will be a debate writing in your writing skills uh, as well as speech writing uh, in case of your writing skills part. Okay. Where in your grammar and writing skills, which comes in section B, you see after the grammar part, you will encounter this writing skills part. And the first two questions are debate writing and speech writing. There's not huge difference between debate writing and speech writing. However, it is good to know what differentiates them so that we are clear about it when you are writing it, okay? So, it is the art of using proper grammar and expression to convey a thought or a message to a reader. Whenever somebody is reading your speech, you are supposed to persuade this one person regarding the idea that you are talking about, okay? Now, as I explain, the difference between the between debate and speech will start rolling in your heads. Let's understand. It's a planned communication to deliver. It, it has to be delivered here in case of uh, speech. It is delivered usually verbally. But when it is printed or it is written, somebody will read your speech. And what is it? It has been 
planned beforehand. It's a planned communication. Unlike debate that happens instantaneously right at the moment, this is something that is planned much earlier because, because it is more like a monologue. You go on giving your speech, right? Then inform your audience about a particular subject or persuade. What are the reasons why a certain person writes a speech or gives a speech is to if somebody is giving a speech, we listen, we understand a couple of things that we did not know earlier. We'll be informed about certain things, completes an action in order to persuade them to do an action. Okay. What are the certain uh, kind of things, uh, things that uh, we need to be persuaded to do such as donating to a non-profit or a charity. So in order to persuade that somebody has to inspire us through a speech or somebody has to persuade us through a speech. And that is why it is important uh, to know how to write an effective speech. Okay. In your personal life to friends or family, you will have to give speech. You know, bro, don't do this. You are not going to end up well if you're doing this. But if you take this on the other hand, man, you're going to be very successful. So this is your way of giving speech or you also get to hear a lot of speech in the family as well. In your uh, professional life, also, you'll have to hear a lot of speech, give a lot of speech to your co-workers, management team, clients. So there will be multiple instances that you're going to encounter where people would want to hear from you and you also have to hear from people. Now, if you are hearing from people, it is up to you. Sit, sit back and decide if it is an effective speech or not. But if you are giving the speech, what is it that how effective can you make it? And what are the ways to do it? So do so. Now, effective speech. Uh, should be used and the audience should be engaged. Now, when your speech is written, it's not uh, enough if the speech is long enough, if the speech consists of high vocabulary words and everything. It should be effective. It should, it should be catchy. It should hold the attention of the reader and make them, compel them to read your speech. Okay, so it's a task on your end. Now, what are the ways? We have a couple of techniques that have been jotted down for you all to make your speech the, you know, effective ones of all. First up, here in this case, uh, a topic would be given to you in case of speech writing in your CBSC exam. Don't worry. But if you're about to go to some place and talk about it based on the situation, the topic has to be selected. Consider your audience. Now, when you're writing it for the CBSC exam, look at the scenario that has been given to you. For example, if you're a head girl or a head boy addressing your um, peers or addressing your um, the students of the school regarding the cleanliness or regarding any other things that they need to follow. You need to consider the audience that you are addressing and you can't talk to them like how you talk to your friends or how you talk to your family. It should be formal and it should be in that case it should be simple because you want all of them to understand it. There are first standard to 10th standard students over there or 11th and 12th students there. You want all of them to understand what you're speaking. Hence it should be simple whether it should be simple or a little complex whether the subject should be simplified furthermore or not, it is up to the context, isn't it? It is up to the situation which has been provided. Then prepare a structure, structure your speech, okay? Structuring is uh, analyze the topic and divide it into chunks. You will get to know the flow in which you have to move. Your topic has to move. Then begin with a strong point. Your speech has to have a lasting impact on the uh, people that you're addressing to. Then use concrete details as visual aids. Now, when you're writing something, when you're giving a monologue on something or when you're giving a speech on something, giving us each and every minute detail about something, it's just like reading a book. The experience of reading a book is, you know, it is eternal and classic. Why? Just holding the book and reading because certain books, for example, fiction and narratives for that matter, they are filled with details. Like there was a was with a rose tinted color and there were a couple of uh, glasses lying next to it. When I say all these things, your visual memory, you'll start picturizing each and every detail in your head, which makes it a very rich um, information block. Okay. So you have to create that in the minds of your readers when you're writing a speech. Give us a lot of details and Use it as a visual aid to enter into the heads of the readers. Okay, then include a personal element as well. Here also in case of as much as you are free to use it in case of debate. Here also you are free to use it in case of the speech. Your creative liberty to use personal observations. Consider rhetorical devices. I'm going to tell you what are rhetorical devices and how they can help you um, in order to sort of enhance the effect of your speech. Then use statistical data, consider 
again it is so important that you have to consider the rhetorical devices again and again okay so end memorably leave a lasting impact on them now what are rhetorical devices rhetorical devices in this instance are nothing but uh, the poetic devices that you we usually use in case of poems how can we use that over here okay this is the beauty of language isn't it now over here in case of the rhetorical devices you are using certain language not exactly to literally mean that particular thing okay so when you say elephant in the room you are not exactly referring to the elephant that is there in the room isn't it you are referring to the topic the burning topic that is there or something that people are not really addressing uh, straight away so that creates such uh, an interesting aura around the subject or the topic that you have chosen so let's see in case of uh, if you can use alliteration repetition of consonant sounds how is it done over here congratulations to jamie who has always been one of the most honest hard working and honorable employees it creates that effect that would make suddenly you know turn all their ears towards you and understand what is this guy is saying so that is a beautiful effect alliteration has then there is anadiplosis anadiplosis is if you have ended a particular sentence with one word you start the next sentence with the same word look at how beautiful this one sounds we are also proud of angie for opening a restaurant a restaurant then now you know that i am going to talk about that restaurant a restaurant that is sure to be successful okay these are very covertly hidden sort of things that we hardly notice yet we know that they are having a major impact on us so we are jotting it down for you and this is your chance to use it all okay then there is anti metabol which is reverse the certain words or phrases and repeat them in successive clauses now how can we do that if you fail to plan when certain words are put in uh, like in the opposite manner we see a couple of times at it in order to see if we can really make sense out of it is it just me who is not understanding it is it that important now we sort of the confusion it creates also brings our attention towards it it's not something like okay i'm not able to understand this one let's let's let it go it questions your understanding only so you come back to it and try to understand what it is if you fail to plan you fail to you plan to fail if you are not planning now it just means that if you are not planning now if you fail to plan you are just making a plan to fail okay now there is antithesis beautiful isn't it antithesis let's take an example when two ideas are put together that's called antithesis and we have a famous quote by neil armstrong who says that's one st uh, small step for man and a giant leap for mankind so the small step and giant leap are two different ideas but have been put together like black and white love and hate these are a couple of examples for antithesis and when you put these together these are all also the ways that make you look when you talk with these things when you put your speech or uh, even in case of debate when you put all these things it also makes you look very smart i tell you these are also a couple of ways that can make your language also look smarter okay then moving forward there are a couple of more a metaphor i feel when you are talking directly the people might not uh, you know understand what you are saying or just might take it for granted and might say oh this is something i know so they might not listen to the rest half of it but if you are a little talking um you know uh, reading in between the lines if that activity is there for the people then i'm sure that they'll understand or they'll concentrate on what you are saying or what you have written okay so in this case i feel like a fish out of water on stage fish out of water on stage oh which means he's uncomfortable okay or he feels out of place out of order sorts but i'll give this speech my best shot okay look how beautiful it sounds similarly thank you all for coming tonight i know it's as cold as ice outside so i appreciate your attendance okay then comes a uh, ascendaten ascendaten omit uh, conjunctions uh, such as and to increase the tempo now if you use uh, these conjunctions it will take a lot of time for you all to uh, finish up a sentence and by that time the audience might have lost um uh, their attention or they would have started thinking about something else now in order to bring their attention quickly towards it and to increase the tempo of your speaking or writing speech what you have to do is if you have to highlight an idea omit conjunctions such as and and over here what you can do for example in case of julius caesar you see that i came i saw there is no conjunction i came and i saw no it has saved us time and also made us 
highlight over what is happening. I came, I saw, I conquered. That is it. When there is and used, I came and okay. After that, I saw, okay. And after that, it takes a lot of time and you're losing interest out of the whole idea, isn't it? I came, I saw, I conquered. As effective as that. Now, that's it about your uh, speech writing. Let's see um, how is the format of it. It also includes introduction. Introduction, greet the audience, tell them about yourself and further introduce the topic. Same as that of debate till now, isn't it? But you don't have to tell them, do you stand for the topic? Do you have to stand against the topic? Nothing is required because it's not a debate. Then quickly get people's attention by quotations, by questioning them, by telling the audience, what are you going to, uh, you know, talk about the background information about it. The introduction must be, it should effectively include a brief preview of your topic, background information about your topic, define the outlines of your speech. How are you going to uh, give this speech? Now, the beautiful advantage with speech is that you can actually plan it beforehand, isn't it? So it is your wish, you plan it. What, are, what is the first thing that you're going to speak? The second thing that you're going to speak? For example, in case of this one, I'll be talking. Now you can tell the audience so that they know what is it that, that is there in store for them. And just now how I say it in case of this one, I say in this session you have, what is debate? What are the examples? How are you going to do? So you know what is there in store for y'all and you stick and you, you hung around until that particular um, phase of this video is unraveled, isn't it? So in that case, I'll be talking about firstly about this one, second we are going to talk about this, third we are going to talk about what is debate, so, uh, fourth we are going to talk about how to write a debate, okay? You can do that in case of a speech. Then begin with a story, a quote, fact, these are the ideas, okay? Fact, a joke, if relevant, uh, or observations in the room, it shouldn't be longer than three to four lines. We have seen so many delegates coming to uh, give a speech and some of them are really witty, really, um, you know, they know as though they have known this room forever. They talk like that and as though they own the room, isn't it? A little joke, a little quotation, all of this keeps us spellbound for the rest of the uh, their speech. So do that. Then, for example, Mahatma Gandhi once said, or this is the, this topic reminds me of an incident or a story. That's how you can start while you're writing your speech. This part is also important because that's when your audience decides whether the speech is worth listening to or not. Okay. Keep your introduction factual, interesting and convincing. Not too long. It should be factual, not a cooked up story again. Then it should be convincing. Although you have, you are telling us a story, it shouldn't be out of the blue and does not make sense uh, to the topic, what you're about to speak. And this one, there's no connection. That shouldn't be the case. Okay. Then, then comes the introduction or the first paragraph is over. Then comes the body or the second paragraph, which is the most important part of any speech. Then, because here is where you provide the number of reasons, arguments to convince the audience to agree with you. When you're giving a speech about certain thing, uh, you have to make yourself to be known. You have to make yourself um, sort of, you have to make them or help them understand that you know about the topic and you should justify why is it that you are telling them to understand it? Them, uh, you have to persuade them basically. Now, no time for questions or concerns since speech is a monologue. Now, you understand that in case of a debate, there will be uh, an opponent who is throwing questions at you. There will be a certain um, concerns that will be expressed and you will have to address all of that, right? But in case of a speech, nothing of that sort. You just stand over there and finish up your monologue that you have structured beforehand. To make sure speech is simpler, you can prepare a flowchart of the details in a systematic way. Possible, you can create your own uh, flowchart. For example, in this case, if your speech is about waste management, then distribute information and arrange it according to the sub paragraphs for your reference and it could include, this is how you can distribute it in case of speech writing. So first one, what is waste management? You have given a sub paragraph or subtitle. Then you're going to talk about major techniques used to manage waste. Next, advantages of waste management and finally, importance of waste management. This is how you can structure it. Later on, coming to the part of conclusion, the conclusion should be something that the audience takes home with them. This is the takeaway from this speech. It was worth listening to. Why? Because of these reasons. That is the conclusion. It could be a reminder, like how we had reinforced or reiterated in case of the debate. Collective call of action, a summary of the speech or the story that you talked about. For example, it is upon us to choose the fate of our home. 
okay you are summarizing it paraphrasing your entire speech um the earth by choosing to begin waste management at our personal spaces it's like the final call okay after concluding add a few lines of gratitude to the audience for their time just as you did case of the debate then for example thank you for being a wonderful audience and uh, lending me your time hope this speech gave you something to take away okay let's understand a uh, simple speech now in this case write a speech to be delivered in the school assembly as rahul or rubaina of delhi public school emphasizing the importance of cleanliness implying that the level of cleanliness represents the character of its residents in about 150 to 200 words however for you it is 120 to 150 words okay so cleanliness is the ne is next to godliness the person has uh, started off with a quote strong quote said great john weasley we have quoted by whom who has given it then hello respected principal instructors and good friends subject uh, the salutation and uh, who is talking self introduction i rahul or rubaina stand in front of you all to emphasize the significance of cleanliness you don't have to say for the topic or against the topic you just have to tell them what is the topic about then background cleanliness is the condition or attribute of being or remaining clean everyone must learn about cleaning everything about what is cleaning why is it important okay moving forward now in case of this one even if we teach our children to wash their hands before and after meals brush their teeth and bathe on regular basis we are unconcerned about keeping our public places now bringing the attention or channelizing the attention to this topic significance of cleanliness around us as well is it is as important as cleaning keeping ourselves clean isn't it now then you come this is the body of um, the speech where you're telling them as to why you're talking about it at the moment why is it important to the audience that it is being addressed to and what are the ways in which they are, they can inculcate it what is the importance of it finally good health ensures a healthy mind which leads to better living overall productivity higher living standards and economic development on the whole you have to reiterate or uh, summarize the whole stuff and give call for the final action it will improve uh, india's international standing then as a result a clean environment is a green environment with you see that clean green you see rhyming at the end right environment with fewer illness thus cleanliness is defined as a symbol of mental purity the final word is given thank you very much for your time or for uh, listening to my speech this is how you write a speech so we're done with the debate and the speech it's time to look at the difference between what is a debate and what is a speech okay speech let's start with speech speech on one hand as we all know it's a monologue given by one person one person's point of view or uh, it has it will be given by uh, one person on the topic but over here two contrasting there's only one person one point of view in case of speech but in the case of debate there is one topic two people two points of view uh, point of views which are contradictory to each other then delivered as an audience uh, to audience on various occasions various occasions you could be giving speeches to the audience here in case of debate sometimes the um, audience also get, take part in the debate okay they also express do you be, uh, do you stand by them do you stand by this topic or the um, other one for or against what are some of the reasons that you would want to give okay they can also be included used to persuade and bring together people of different mindsets so this is a major difference speech you are trying to persuade everybody and bring all their attention towards this one whole topic okay for this one okay then used to prove one's uh, point of view like here in debate the goal is to prove their point of view and win only their point of view you don't have to persuade everybody you have to justify your point and convince them there okay now the material is prepared prepared in case of speech it is prepared well in advance however in case of this one now you might say wait in case of debate writing so we do no preparations at all no not like that only one side of the argument can be planned correct what am i going to do what are the questions am i going to ask that can be planned and the rest what is the other person or the what is the opponent about to speak i can only assume okay i can only guess the other side has to be assumed and 
countered on spot hence if there are a couple of questions that are asked on spot what do you have to do you'll have to think of an answer that is uh, pretty much relevant and justifies your stand you'll have to give it then and there okay so these are the differences between a debate and a speech writing however their format is pretty much similar uh, the content the way the content is put is a little different okay so practice writing debate and speech uh, let's see which one are you really good at and on that note i'll see you all in the next class thank you